Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to this service of worship here at First United Methodist Church. We are glad you are here. I encourage everyone in attendance to please fill out the registration cards. They're found there in your bulletin. This allows us to be aware of your presence and any concerns that you might have. Also today, we celebrate Golden Cross Sunday, and if you would like to contribute to Golden Cross, it is a special uh, collection for older adult ministries, pastoral care ministries, children and family ministries within the Illinois Great R Rivers Conference. So there's more information on the back of your bulletin. Please, uh, please consider a gift to Golden Cross. <clears throat> also, um, I'd like to, uh, uh, and thanks to Patty Barr, I have this quote this morning. The, uh, the accounts of my death have been greatly exaggerated by Mark Twain. Uh, this week, I received a, a letter, email from Leonard Awasako, personal lawyer to the late Mike Fender, who died as a result of an auto accident and has left $9.7 million to those of you who would like to write in and claim it. and the address is somewhere over in Nigeria. <laughs> so I wanted to let you know, um, again, for some reason people like to hack United Methodist pastors. I know Miley's been hacked several times and I, I get these uh, every so often. Um, I will never request money nor uh, promote money-making things within my emails, ever. <laughs> so if you receive something like that, please ignore it. Um, I think you can even report it to the authorities, so um, just to let you know. I want to make a correction in the bulletin. Uh, birthday Bash is not at 6.30 this Wednesday, but at 5.30. So please make note of that change. It is at 5.30. Also, um, just a, um, uh, some, some information, clarification information. Um, from SPRC, we want to let everyone know we are not eliminating the youth program here at First United Methodist Church. There needs to be some restructuring done. We will be working with our youth this summer, and the church does care about our children and youth. So we ask for your prayers as this uh, program is being restructured. Also, prayers for Amy Beals, uh, daughter of... Uh, uh, Diane and John Redden, make sure um, you keep her in your prayers. She's going through some challenges right now. At this time, I invite you to stand and greet one another in the spirit of Christ. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship 
as we hear our prelude. Good morning. Will you join with me responsively in the call to worship? The Holy One knows each sheep calling us by name. We hear the voice of Jesus calling us to follow him. The Holy One sees our need, feeding us with wisdom and truth. We know the voice of Jesus leading us to goodness and peace. The Holy One protects and guides us showing us the way to eternal life. Let us worship our shepherd who calls us here. Shall we pray? God of love and goodness, you lead us into pastures of plenty, giving us food for our bodies and nourishment for our souls. You show us the source of salvation, filling our hearts with the clean, fresh water of your love. You guide us on difficult paths comforting us with the assurance of eternal life in your name. Help us recognize your voice, that we may be at peace in your presence, even when we are afraid. Amen. Will you stand as you are able and join in singing our first hymn, page 136, verses 1 through 3.
you join me in the prayer of illumination? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. You may be seated. Our first scripture reading today is probably a favorite of many. It's the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Our second scripture reading is from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 22 through 30. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. My friends, will you please bow and say a word of prayer for me? Abba Father, you are the potter and we are the clay. Mold us, mold me into the image of Christ Jesus our Lord in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, today is uh, Mother's Day. It is also known as the Festival of the uh, Christian Home. And uh, it, it's a day in which everyone uh, celebrates those special people in their lives that have made them who they are. Uh, a, a day in which we celebrate those individuals, uh, those ladies that have that have blessed us. Do we have any of those ladies in here today? <laughs> oh, there's one. I've got one up front. Oh, there's another one. Go ahead, raise your hand. If you have blessed a young person or someone and have made them feel special, we give God thanks for you because you truly have been a blessing in, in the lives of so many folks. You make people feel special. You make them feel like they're not just a number. Numbers. You know, our lives are filled with numbers. Each year we file our income tax now, that's an exercise in numbers to end all number games. Pages upon pages of numbers, earned numbers, spent numbers, invested numbers, and saved numbers. When it is finally prepared, we send it off to the Eternal Revenue Service. Did I say Eternal Revenue Service? Because <laughs> that's what it feels like sometimes. They're ever-present. And that has our Social Security number on. And the IRS takes all those numbers and put them into a, a computer along with the numbers of thousands and thousands of millions of millions of other people. And to them, we become a number. The government knows us by our tax number. The state knows us by our driver's license number. The bank knows us by our account number. And when we retire, we'll be remembered by our social security number. And it goes on and on. In fact, sometimes I wonder if anybody knows us at all without a number. And that's why this morning's gospel reading is so significant, because it tells us that God knows us. He knows us intimately, in fact, better than we know ourselves. And that's important to remember. In spite of the fact that the image of the sheep and the shepherd is foreign to most of our experiences, the words of the gospel this morning hearken for us a truth that our human hearts long to hear. The Old Testament writer, Psalm 23, put it even more clearly when he wrote, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Jesus says it this morning, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. 
There's a new kind of plane. <clears throat> a new kind of plane uh, was on its, its first flight. It was full of reporters and journalists. A little while after takeoff, the captain's voice was heard over the speakers. And it uh, went something like this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be your pilot for this plane's historic first flight. I can tell you the flight is going well. Nevertheless, I must tell you about a minor inconvenience that has occurred. The passengers on the right side can, if they will, please look out their windows and see the closest engine is slightly vibrating. That should not worry you because this plane is equipped with four engines and we are flying along smoothly at an acceptable altitude. As long as you're looking out the right side, you might as well look at the other engine on that side and you will notice it is glowing, or more precisely, one should say, burning. That shouldn't worry you either since this plane is designed to fly with just two engines if necessary, and we are maintaining an acceptable altitude and speed. As long as we are looking out the plane, those of you on the left side shouldn't worry if you look out your side of the plane and notice that one of the engines that is supposed to be there is missing. It fell off about 10 minutes ago. And let me tell you that we are amazed that the plane is doing so well. <laughs> However, I will call your attention to something a little more serious along the center aisle all the way down the plane, a crack has appeared. Some of you are, I suppose, able to look through the crack and may even notice the waves of the Atlantic Ocean below. In fact, those of you with very good eyesight may be able to notice a small lifeboat that was thrown from the plane. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be happy to know that your captain is keeping an eye on the progress of the plane from that lifeboat below. <laughs> now, I realize that there are some situations we probably shouldn't make light of, especially with planes uh, having problems. The plane crash is definitely one of them, but that story that I happened to cross this week about the plane and its pilots seemed so descriptive of our lives. In situations very similar to that plane flight, everything around us seems, well, sometimes it seems to be falling apart and the person in charge seems to be as remote as the captain in the raft on the ocean far below. But the good news this morning is that we are known by God and loved by God. And when God knows us and loves us, God will not abandon us in spite of the senseless violence that seems to be so much a part of our world today, the innocent suffering and death that occur, our, our failures, our encounters with suffering. God wants us to know that God cares. God cares. God loves us. God wants us to know that love and wants us to know that love is everlasting and that God calls us by name. That's precisely the promise that God made with us from the beginning of time and that Jesus makes with us today. I know my own and my own know me. We are more than just a number to God. In the midst of an uncertain world faced with unknown dangers and threatened by unpredictable events of evil and violence around us. We are known by God and we are loved by God. Even the hairs of your head are numbered, Jesus once said, for God is greater than anything that can threaten us in life. I love how the Veggie Tales uh, children's uh, video says, God is bigger than the boogeyman, and God is, but we have to learn to trust. We have to learn to understand God's ways are not always our ways, and God's time is not always our time. The death and resurrection of Jesus assures us that God cares, that God loves. 
And we need that reminder for there are all kinds of things in life that can threaten us. Accidents, disasters, sickness, disease. No one knows when or where. No one knows when or where the next terrorist event might take place. We know that danger and death are part of our lives. But the good news for us this morning is that whatever happens to us is not nearly as important as what happens in us. For God is greater than any danger. That's why these words of Jesus mean so much to us when he says, I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. One of my favorite stories in the New Testament is the time when Jesus and the disciples were caught in a fishing boat on the Sea of Galilee when a storm came up. I'm sure you remember how the disciples reacted when the waves and the wind threatened their boat. The boat was rocking and it was slowly filling with water. It was beginning to sink and would soon dump them into the sea. And through all of that, where was Jesus? Asleep in the back of the boat. Asleep in the back of the boat. Finally, the disciples woke the master and hit him with a harsh question. Master, do you not care that we are about to perish? My friends, you and I have been with those disciples. We have seen the storm clouds rise, and we have felt the wind howl and had the waves beat down upon us. It may be the death of a loved one. It may be the battle of disease or a fight with cancer. It could be a broken relationship or a time when your child didn't come home on time and worries overcame you. We have all been there and we have all shared the disciples' question. Master, don't you care? And that's why, that is why the gospel reading this morning is so precious to us. For Jesus' own words remind us that he does indeed care. I know my own, and my own know me. Of course, Jesus cares. That's the secret in handling life's storms. Life can be tough at times. Disease, danger, and death are all part of life. But God is greater God is greater than all those things, and God's love is infinitely more secure. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Hearing is believing, and believing, my friends, is following. Hearing the voice of Jesus means trusting that God is greater. It means listening to Jesus and following him. I suggest you read Jesus' words in John, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 27th verse. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. My friends, God is greater than anything that we might face. And that is the thought for the day. God is not a captain who has abandoned us and is floating around on a boat. God walks beside us. God is the shepherd who is able to protect us from whatever may threaten us or our families. What we are talking about is a relationship of love. That is the relationship that you and I can have with God. A relationship of love. God is greater than any temptation. God is greater than any sin. But we must listen to God. The call of our Lord is hidden in a whole chorus of worldly voices which beckon us, other would-be shepherds, 
seek to tempt us, away, tempt us away from the Good Shepherd, the joy of his forgiveness and the security of his love. And when we are weak and confused, we may fall victim to the enticements of other gods. An American tourist who was traveling in the Middle East came upon several shepherds whose flocks had intermingled while drinking water from a brook and after an exchange of greetings, one of the shepherds turned toward the sheep and called out, Mana, Mana, Mana. That means in Arabic, follow me. And immediately his sheep separated themselves from the others and followed him. Then one of the two remaining shepherds called out, Mana, Mana, and his sheep left that common flock and they too followed the shepherd. And the one shepherd that was left, the American started talking to him in a little bit more detail. He said, that is absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. The sheep will come when called? He goes, well, my sheep will come when I call them. And the American said, well, could we try something? Can I put on your cloak and, and your hat and, and call them? And the shepherd kind of smiled and said, sure. So he gave him his cloak, he gave him his hat, gave him his staff, and the American called out, Mana! Mana! And the sheep just kept grazing and watering themselves, and he did it again. And he started to get a little frustrated because the sheep wouldn't listen to him, yet he had on the same clothes and and the staff, I mean, he looked like a shepherd, and Lord knows he smelled like one after putting on that coat. So he asked the shepherd, he said, so you're telling me the sheep will never follow anybody else? And he said, no, that's not the case. If a sheep is sick, they may follow someone else. If the sheep is sick. Hmm. If the sheep is sick, and that is what happens to so many of us, we forget who God is. We come, become sick with following other things, the world, the, and what the world would have us do, and what the world would have us become. We become sick. And we start to put our trust in other things, not in God, not in the Good Shepherd, but in other things. We forget what God has done. We get caught up in the world and believe it is the way, and that is just not so. And we have seen it, haven't we? People young and old who are sick battered by the storms of life, distracted by voices urging them to go this way or that way. They have lost their bearings and they don't know where they are, or where they're going. And that can be more than a little frightening. It leads to despair and hopelessness. And when someone is sick, they will follow anyone who will promise them a moment of happiness, a moment of comfort, a brief feeling of peace or forgetfulness, or a sense, a sense that they are special. You know, an airline pilot passing over an airport one day called the air traffic controller and asked him what time it was. And the air traffic controller replied, well, what airline are you flying with? And the pilot shot back, well, what airline am I flying? What possible difference does that make? I just want to know what time it is. And the controller replied patiently, well, sir, it makes all the difference in the world. If you are with United Airlines, it is 1,500 hours. If you are with American, it's 3 p.m. If you are with Delta, the big hand is on the 12 and the little hand is on the 3. <laughs> and if you're with Southwest, it's Tuesday. So knowing, knowing what airline you are flying and where you are going can make all the difference in the world. Building loving relationships, knowing what it is necessary to build loving relationships can make all the difference in the world. God 
is an intimate God. And we need to remember that, my friends. God wants to be in an intimate relationship with each and every one of us. God desires that. God has shown us that. God is an intimate God, a loving God. That is what Christ taught us and even showed us. God is very close. God knows each of us better than our best friend knows us. God cares about our problems. But the call of Jesus, the good shepherd, is I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no better way, no greater truth, no happier life. Our Lord reaches out to us in love that we might follow him. And we need to listen to his voice, for he is the good shepherd. And when we put our trust in the good shepherd, we will find ourselves on rock-solid holy ground. Let us pray. Lord God, in the midst of confusion, we ask for clarity to hear your voice and your voice alone. Guide and direct us, Lord, in, in your ways so that we might share the love you have for us with others so that they might come to know you. We pray this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn of response is Holy Ground. Faith we sing number 2272. And, and during this responsive hymn, we are going to be blessing our prayer shawls. And I would ask those who have participated in this wonderful ministry of outreach, comfort, and care, if you would please come forward. If you are unable to come forward, if you'd be willing to raise your hand at another point. But at this time, you may remain seated, but let us join together in the hymn, Holy Ground, as our prayer shawl ministers come forward. Friends, this is a wonderful ministry that this church participates in, not only participates, but heads up. Before you are, are beautiful examples of their love for people, their compassion for people, the work of their hands inspired by God. They also are in need of help, of people. If you cannot 
crochet if you cannot knit, that's okay. They need people to offer these prayer shawls to those in need. And you can always contact one of them and they'd be so willing and so happy to have you help them get these to the people that need them the most. Let us be in prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for those who dedicated their lives to this ministry of love and caring. We give you thanks for their dedication and spirit of compassion. And we ask, Lord, for your grace to be upon these prayer shawls, warming, comforting, enfolding, and embracing those who receive them. Lord, may these mantles be a safe haven, a sacred place of security and well-being, sustaining and embracing in good times as well as difficult ones. Lord, may those who receive these shawls be cradled in hope, kept in joy, graced with peace, and wrapped in love. We pray this in the name of your beloved Son. Amen. Thank you, ladies, for all that you do. And I believe, Captain Woodard, uh, these are prayer squares as well. Um, so if you know of a student or someone who needs something put in a pocket or in, in a folder, in their wallet, we have many shawls to thank you. We come now to that time of worship in which we confess to God those weaknesses that we have. Let us join together responsively in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. God of compassion and grace, you call us to follow you and to listen to the sound of your voice. You give us food that will fill our souls and water that will satisfy our thirst for you. You long to comfort our wounds and protect us from harm. Forgive us when we run towards danger, refusing to accept the good gifts you offer. Hear now these words of assurance God's forgiveness is an endless fountain of love washing us in the waters of eternal life. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And let the people of God say, Amen. Let us now join together in the prayer that he taught us by saying, Our Father, Let us now worship God through the giving of our tithes, gifts, and offerings. Let us pray. Compassionate Lord, Savior, Shepherd, accept these gifts as signs of our gratitude for the generous gifts you give us, gifts flowing from the eternal stream of your grace. Bless what we give to your kingdom so that your will might be made known throughout the world. We pray this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Let the ushers come forward as we hear our offertory.
My friends, as you prepare to leave this place, follow the voice of Jesus wherever he leads. Trust that he will nourish and protect you and fill you with the goodness of God's love. In the name of the one who calls and guides us, let us go out to love and to serve the world. Go now in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My friends, go with God and go in peace. Amen. Please remain standing and join in our closing hymn, Salvation Belongs to Our God. The words will be on the screen. This is a new hymn for us, and I'm going to sing a little phrase of it once. We'll hear the introduction, then I'll sing, and then I'm going to bring everybody in. It's very simple. Enjoy. Salvation belongs to our God Who sits upon the throne Salvation belongs 